all right so the first thing we are going to do is to go into our render settings and project settings so for us to open our project setting you just hit ctrl d on your keyboard it goes to your project setting so what i want to do is i want to change the frame per second to 24 here now that's pretty much what i need to do there that's just the only thing i need to do here and i'm still going to come back here as a working then i will do the same thing at the render setting by clicking on this icon or hit ctrl b then it takes me to the render setting so i want to match the same setting that i have for my project setting here so remember i changed my frame rate to 24 so this is also going to be 24 and that is it we don't need anything more here now the reason why i'm changing the frame rate is so that the animation that i have in my viewport will be the same thing i'm going to get when i'm rendering so i don't have a different frame rate for my viewport animation which is going to be different from that of the ren render setting so all right so having done that the next thing is we want to set up our our mograph dynamics so i'm going to bring up sphere if you can see if you remember the image i showed you in the project introduction to the project you can notice i was working with sphere to create the abstract dynamic so i'm going to have a sphere then i'm going to change now if i go to display and change it to go shading with line the shortcut is nb so i can use nb if i'm to go back you're going to see the shortcut is na so if i don't come in i can use the shortcut so just so if i hit na it takes me to normal gorilla shading nb takes me to gorilla shading with lines so so what i want to do is i want to change my sphere from this standard sphere into icohesedron so you go into the type icosahedron rather <laughs> so you go to icosahedron you can notice the way the wire that makes up this sphere has changed so that's the first thing the second thing i'm going to do is um now have my mograph setup so i'm going to go to the mograph menu go to cloner so as soon as i have my cloner i'm going to make this sphere a child of the cloner so let me start naming this i'll call this my um sphere down so this is what i'm going to add the dynamics to all right so another thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create another sphere which will hold this one I, i'm just going to scale it up a little bit if i go to the basic of this new sphere i can turn on the x-ray so you can see what we have so what i want to do is i want to create a clone of sphere that will be inside this sphere that, it, that will take the volume of this new sphere that I've created this one that I have here so the way I'm going to go about that is let me rename this to container alright so I'm going to click on the sphere go to the object tab of the sphere attribute manager I'm going to change the mode from linear to object so it's asking me to look for objects so it, immediately i do that you notice the sphere disappears and the reason why it disappears is because it's looking for an object to read from so there is no object in this field so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag in the container into this object as soon as i do that you notice it creates this object along the surface of this sphere but I don't want it to be along the surface, I want it to be in the volume. So I'm going to click on this distribution method to volume. So I'm going to have this volume. So now, if I'm to render, you're going to see this sphere. I don't want to see this sphere. So I'm going to hide this sphere in the viewport and also in the render. So if I click on this now, you notice this sphere is no more there. Alright, so we are making progress. The other thing we are going to do is to try and create random uh, sizes of this i don't want to have um equal sizes so i'm going to select the cloner 
go to the MoGraph menu and go to the effector I'm going to see random as soon as I click on random it's this redistributes this object and change their position but if I go to the random menu or attributes go to the parameter I don't want to affect the position so I'm going to uncheck that so they jump back to the initial position so the only thing I want to affect is the scale so I click on this scale I can decide to scale different axis can so if I want to scale along the X axis or Y and along Z but all right sorry about that so I'm sorry I got a call so all right so like as I was saying you can decide to resize this in different position but I don't want this what I want to I want to have an equal scaling so what I'm going to do instead of changing this value I'll go to uniform scale then whatever I do here will affect everything so you notice what we have here. so I want to have a scale of 0 0.1 there about or 0 point I think 3 is okay so we have 0 0.3 and that is all I need to do here so I'll go back to my cloner I can decide to increase the number of counts so if I want to increase this I can make this 30 then I have 30 clones but clones of sphere so if you notice here you notice that these spheres are intersecting and that doesn't look nice so that is where the dynamic will come in play all right so for me to add in the dynamic I go to the cloner object right click on it I'm going to see simulation tag go to rigid body so as soon as I have that rigid body added to this cloner if I click click play everything falls you notice that so that's good we are we're coming up all the balls falls and cinema 4d treats everything as one object you can notice it sees it as one object and that is not what we want we want to treat each of these sphere as individual objects so I'm going to go to the tab the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this collision inherit tag change it from none to apply to children so what will happen now is cinema 4d will go ahead to apply this tag to the individual children that this cloner has so if we play the same thing happens it falls the reason why it's falling is because we need to do a second thing under this collision which is individual element we have we have told cinema 4d to apply to the children but the children we are applying this tag to now the individual elements are off so we need to turn them on so click on this off change it to all so we change it to all and I click play notice what happens everything scatters and and the reason why they scatter is because the reason why they go apart is because they are already intersecting and for them to push themselves apart the force that they have the bounce and the force that they have is trying to push them apart that's why we have that chaotic um, explosion so what we will do is we can reduce this bounds first let's make it five increase the friction so I don't have more I want to have less bounce more friction if I click on play scatter steel so and the reason why it's still I'm still having this is because I need to go to a setting in this tag that will hold down these old spheres together so even as they are trying to move apart there should be we are trying to create a force that will still try to bring them together so that they don't go off chaotically so i'm going to come to this force section then i'll go to follow position and follow rotation i'm going to add a value to it so now what happens is that the higher the value the more they are going to be held together the less the effect of gravity on them so I'm, I'm going to start small let's try three and play then you see that okay they are now held together Le I still want this some of them to fall to just move down I want gravity to affect a little bit so let's say 1.5 
1.5 let's play and let's see what have. okay so we're having this and i'm liking this so if you come down here you notice that all these spheres are not intersecting and dynamic is in play because you have them interacting still not intersecting all right so but if you don't want gravity in this scene you can go to your project setting ctrl d go to the dynamic section where you have your gravity you change it to zero now if you play it stays at one position and you have that so let me increase this time to let's say 200 and play so we have notice it's not falling it's just staying in one place because the gravity value we have is zero so if we want this ball to float in the air what we're going to do is we're going to give this gravity a minus sign let's say minus 2000 you notice that it will start floating so let me back out a little bit so if i hit play you notice it floats and the higher the value i have here the more it goes up so you notice that so let me back out so you see so you can actually use this as to create a kind of a balloon like effect and all that but we're not going for this um i think i like what i have here Mm. okay i think i like this so what i'm going to do now is since this is not an animation i want to have a still image and i want to add different materials to this object or these spheres that we have here i need to do some caching on it before i convert it into an editable format if i'm to do that now it goes back to the initial position and i have to start up my um simulation again so what i do is i come to this cloner right click on the cloner go to the mograph tags add the mograph cache to it then bake it as soon as i bake it bakes the mograph and also the dynamic tab the dynamic tag so the dyna dynamics on it is also baked so i don't have to go back and bake the dynamics so what i'm going to do is select the cloner right click and go to current state object so as soon as i do that i am done i can decide to delete this because i don't need it I can delete the container on this so i am left with my ball so i'm left with my sphere so all the spheres i have here you can see them here these are all the spheres we have all right so that is a dynamic about this um, project so we are going to stop this um class here and we'll come back to the next part of this tutorial thank you if you like this please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe thank you bye god bless you